Thank you to our honor guide and manor music. Please continue standing as we warmly welcome middle school students from the College Park Academy. Kindly join them in the Pledge of Allegiance. Students, please begin. United States of America. Now we will have our invocation. This reflection will be offered by one of our long-term chaplains at the University of Maryland, Rabbi Eli Bachman of the Chabad Jewish Student Center. We gather today to remember and reflect on the offerings our veterans are making and have made on behalf of our country. Bless the officers, enlisted men and women of our Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, and Coast Guard as they carry out the responsibilities of their calling. We welcome those who have returned home to their homes with a newfound perspective on life and for sharing and bringing this gift into the life of our communities. As the saying goes, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. You, our veterans, have done so and have forever taught us this inspiring lesson. Today we also remember and reflect on the University of Maryland veterans. From amongst our students, alumni, faculty, and their families, there are those who have answered the call to serve our great country. We remember especially those who are in harm's way. May they be protected and kept healthy in body and spirit. Through their devotion to duty and the common good, may peace come and the horrors of war may be but a memory. We are grateful for the families of the loved ones whose lives are intertwined with those who serve. May their times of separation and loneliness be short and their homecoming be in a healthy and joyful manner. Sustain all those for whom we pray and keep us mindful of their service to our nation. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Bachman. I'm pleased to welcome all of our veterans, faculty, staff, student, alumni, family, and friends here today. Thank you for joining us. I also want to acknowledge that the Mayor of College Park is with us today. Mayor Fellows, would you stand? Thank you for being here. Our university president, Dr. Wallace Lowe, is a strong advocate for our veterans on campus. Under his leadership, Maryland has made, created spaces and opportunities for our veterans to succeed. Please join me in welcoming President Lowe. 
Thank you, Linda, and welcome to the Veterans Day 2014 service to reflect and remember. 100 years ago, on August of 1914, the world proudly marched to war. In all their strength, no side was strong enough. By November, they stood yards apart in trenches, open graves to be filled. Round after round, soldiers took hard blows until steel, gas, and generals dropped them. Blasts from howitzers cracked them and then shattered the world. Even today, our fights come from the peace that followed, the painstaking work of putting the pieces together again. On this day, in 1918, when the clock reached the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the war to end all wars paused, a moment observed but mostly forgotten. Many here today in Memorial Chapel and those who live in memory, know well the wages of answering the call, of duty and quiet courage met with insouciance, of sacrifice beyond understanding, of folded flags on empty chairs. Today, and every day, we must salute our veterans. As a nation and as a university, we must do all we can to make the return a welcome to civilian life. We must answer service with many services, courage, with respect. In the solemnity of this anniversary, we honor. But in all the other days, we can do more to serve, just as our veterans have done. Thank you, Dr. Lowe. Today we're celebrating our Maryland veteran community. We give thanks for the veterans in our community who have returned from service and others who are serving right now. We remember dedicated and brave University of Maryland veterans who have passed away, some of them in the line of duty. Ever since its beginning, this beautiful chapel has honored University of Maryland veterans and served as a place where veteran achievements can be recognized. We give tribute to all veterans this afternoon as a part of the seventh Veterans Week at the University of Maryland, a series of programs bringing together veterans and raising campus awareness of veterans' contributions. Our veterans program this afternoon is one of reflection and remembrance. We will start with veterans reflecting on their veteran experience. I am absolutely delighted to introduce our first veteran speaker, University of Maryland undergraduate, Joe V. Batong. Jovi came to the United States with her family as a young child and after high school followed in the footsteps of her two older brothers and joined the Navy. It was in the Navy when she discovered her calling to help injured soldiers, eventually leading to her study bioengineering at the University of Maryland. Jovi is one of the 58 2014 Tillman Military Scholars nationwide. Jovi will reflect on both her time in the military and her life today as a busy undergraduate student. Welcome, Jovi. Thank you. Can't move this down because I'm short. <laughs> um, thank you, Dr. Clement and Dr. Lowe. Thank you for that. Um, 
Denise asked me to talk a little about my military experience and how that helped me in UMD. But before that, I feel as though I need to tell you a little more about myself. I came into America in 1993, and I grew up in New Jersey. Um, graduated high school at the top 10 percentile with a 3.9 GPA. But when I went to college, I didn't have the drive or the motivation or the passion to learn. So I dropped out of college, Stevens Institute of Technology, another engineering school, with a terrible GPA that I don't even want to tell you guys. Um, after that, I spent the summer wandering around the east coast of the United States. I was up in New York, Jersey, went down to Florida, South Carolina, and I made my way into Texas and somehow found myself in front of the Navy recruiter's office. And it was here, in front of this Navy recruiter's office in Houston, Texas, that my life really began to change. I joined the Navy in 2006, and in boot camp, even before I was officially inside in the Navy, I had the pleasure of having many people helping me out as mentors and as, as friends. Um, while I, was at, while I graduated boot camp, I was meritoriously advanced from E1 to E3. Uh, it's basically a promotion in civilian terms. And after that, I became, I went to the USS Mason as a fire controlman. While I was in the, on board the USS Mason, I had the opportunity to meet so many great sailors who became my mentors and eventually my friends. And under their tutelage, I was able to become the subject matter expert for my system, the AN SPY-1 Delta radar system, as well as became the, the work center su supervisor. And I was promoted from E3 to E6 within six years, which um, the average amount of time for that to happen is about eight years. And despite all of my accomplishments, I know that this is not just my accomplishments. These are the accomplishments of myself and the people who helped me, the people who took their time to mentor me and to guide me, that didn't see the, high, the college dropout that I was and saw me as, as a potential leader and someone who could, who could be better than what I was right then. And while I was in the Navy, they saw that and they changed me. They, I guess you could say that they trained me to become the leader that I am now, to become the electronics expert that I was while I was in the Mason, and to become better. They were always pushing me to be better. And those people I want to thank, F. Suman Mospa, Chief McCroy, and Lieutenant Aguiar, my mentors and my teachers. Transitioning out of the Navy, I came to UMD College Park and tried to finish up my engineering, or I will be finishing up my engineering degree in a few years. But here, I also noticed that I have the same mentors here. I have the people who are willing to spend the time to sit with me and talk to me, help me with all my problems. And I just want to give, take a moment to thank those people. Um, Joseph Alamani, who is not here right now, he was the first um, student veteran that I met on board, on on EMD, who showed me around campus and sat with me and talked with me and asked me how everything was going. Henry Carvajales, who is sitting right there, also did the same and is always taking the time to talk to every, to every veteran that he sees, make sure everyone is there. And especially to Corey Carfango and Brian Virtues. Um, Corey was actually the very first one that, that spoke to me about the veterans' student life and about Terp Vets and got me in introduced to Brian. And I never thought about this coming into UMD. I, never, I came here because I heard they were just a great school for engineering and I wanted to become a bioengineer. But I realized that there's also such a great support for the, for the veteran community here. Um, I already mentioned a few names, but Irene Martin is always, always helping out. Um, whenever I have a question, I, I could talk to her and she'll, she, she'll either find the answer for me or she has the answers. Um, Terry, uh, Terry's amazing. I don't see her. Lauren, thank you for all your help, for 
supporting us, the veterans, and for giving us all these opportunities. And speaking of opportunities, UMD has so many opportunities for the veterans to excel, not only in academics and um, not only in academics, but to also help serve the community. Because I was um, able to join UMD, I became involved with many organizations such as Team River Runner, which um, just a few months back, the Maryland Adventure Program map as with Amanda Evans and Team River Runner joined with Disabled Sports USA and we're, we were able to help young children with disabilities show them that they could do more than, than they thought that they could by putting them into kayaks and allowing them to row around and see that they are actually a lot stronger. I wouldn't have been able to be part of that, that amazing event if it weren't for being involved with UMD and with the veterans here in this, in this community. And it's not just the, the people in the stamp and the people around the, the, in UMD. There's also the professors that I was able to sit down with, explain my situation, and who are able to help me out. Um, because of everyone's support here, I feel that UMD is not just like an amazing engineering school. It's also an amazing school for the veterans. Thank you so much for all your support for helping us out, for giving us all our opportuni the opportunities that we could get, and for opening doors for us. And thank you so much for having us here. Thank you. Jovi, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us, and we have for you a challenge coin. <laughs> Our next speaker is Carlos Sepulveda, who's representing our veteran staff. While in the U.S. Coast Guard, Carlos was trained in the handling of secret material, search and rescue, navigation, and worked as a vessel officer operator in Morgan City, Louisiana. Following military service, Carlos completed his undergraduate degree in psychology at Florida State University and then entered the master's program with a concentration in student affairs here at the University of Maryland. As part of his program at Maryland, he serves as graduate assistant in the Rights and Responsibilities Unit in the Department of Resident Life. We are extremely pleased to have Carlos with us today. Good morning, everyone. Um, like Dr. Clement said, my name is Carlos Sepulveda. I'm a second year master's student in the student affairs concentration, um, and I work for the Department of Resident Life um, in the Office of Rights and Responsibility. Uh, first, I would like to say that I'm extremely honored and humbled um, to have the privilege to speak to you all today. Veterans Day truly celebrates some of the most courageous men and women that our country and the world has ever known. On this day, I would like, um, I would like to thank each and every one of you um, that has served, that will serve in the future. A little background on who I am. I served four years in the United States Coast Guard from 2005 to 2009. In 2005, I went to Operations Specialist School in Petaluma, California. After graduating, I spent the next three years at Marine Safety Unit Morgan City as a vessel traffic operator. Um, when you think of a vessel traffic operator, um, basically think of an air traffic controller, uh, but with boats and carrying hazardous materials. This was, a job, this was a job prior to joining the Coast Guard that I had no idea existed. Within the Coast Guard, I attained the rank of E5 in three years and was the youngest supervisor as, at my unit. I was blessed to serve with a number of amazing individuals who mentored me and pushed me along the way. A few things that quickly became apparent to me in my first year of being in the Coast Guard. First, while I loved swimming growing up, I would never be a rescue swimmer. That just wasn't going to be in the cards for me. The second is that no one ever questions a guy with a folder. Good thing to remember. <laughs> another, another thing that I learned very quickly was um, dust bunnies do exist. Um, and they all apparently congregate underneath the racks, underneath the barracks. <laughs> Finally, attention to detail. Um, unlike those dust bunnies, um, attention to detail is something that you know, was required to be maintained at all times. As many of you may or may not be familiar with, the Coast Guard is the smallest branch of the military. Um, 
I believe that I'm about one of five Coasties um, here on campus, which is honestly a, a pretty big deal because it's four more than I'm ever used to having around, so it's very nice to see some, some faces. My experience in the Coast Guard relates to working um, in the Department of Resident Life when I think of encountering a diverse population. I'm serving in the Coast Guard was one of the few times in my life when the people who I was surrounded by were genuinely different from me. I served with people from places like Cambodia, Nigeria, Guam, Alaska, and Canada. All places that I previously, I previously never met anyone from, much less been to. These experiences prepared me for work that I'm doing now. Being aware that students are coming from diverse backgrounds and experiences have, has helped me tremendously in providing them with the support that they may need. It has also allowed me to realize that my reality growing up is not the reality that was experienced by everyone. Another thing that I gained from the Coast Guard is perspective and how to find humor in all things. Throughout my service, I learned there will often be times when you feel overwhelmed, stressed, and days that nothing seems to go right. But it's important to remember that things are not always as bad as they seem. My senior chief used to tell me all the time, it's like water on a duck's back. It would all just roll off. I, th I think specifically of a time when I was on a storm team during Hurricane Gustav in 2008. We were tasked with being first responders for our unit the morning after the hurricane hit. With the chaos of the hurricane and evacuations going on all around us outside, we noticed a small leak that began to form in the inside of our building. Our team leader went upstairs to inspect the status of this roof um, as we were continuing to check our communications equipment for the next day. Moments later, all that I remember was hearing a huge crash. And I was looking up, and I was trying to figure out what was going on. And all I saw was my supervisor's legs hanging out of the roof, um, boots, his ODU pants, and him saying, and this is something that I'll always remember, he said, well, I guess we don't have to worry about this leak now. In this moment of chaos and craziness that surrounded us, things were not as bad as they seemed, and I definitely was able to find the humor in the situation. Within the Coast Guard, a term that I would hear over and over and become intimately familiar with was the term Semper Gumby. Semper Gumby was a term that referenced the need to always be flexible. I learned very quickly that my job wasn't just my job, and someone else's job could very quickly become my own. The phrase, this is not my job, was something that was strictly forbidden. The need to be flexible is ever present in my role in student conduct. Within the Office of Rights and Responsibilities, I never know what student, incident, or story I'll be facing on a given day. My transition to this position was made much easier by the experience I gained in the Coast Guard, often giving people news that they didn't want to hear. Being a supervisor of a team and giving orders that must be followed is quite different than stern warnings given to students um, that can be followed at their discretion. This is certainly taking a period of adjusting for me, to say the least. The Coast Guard has provided me opportunities both personally and professionally. Experiences that I had in the Coast Guard have benefited me trem tremendously. I'm positive that my service in the Coast Guard has given me access to things that I would never have been possible otherwise. I was lucky enough to serve the best country in the world alongside some of the greatest people that I've ever met. Now as a student affairs practitioner, one of my primary goals is to enhance the student, student veteran experience. I know veterans provide a great benefit to our campus community, and events such as this show the commitment that our university has to serving veterans. I would like to thank each of you for your time and commitment to veterans and allowing me the opportunity to speak about my veter uh, veteran experience. Happy vet uh, Veterans Day. Thank you, Carlos, for being here to tell your story. We're very proud to have you as one of our own and to present you with a challenge for Before we hear from our third veteran speaker, we want to recognize the service and commitment our Maryland veterans have made to the nation. To those of you currently in the military, you represent everyday reminders to your fellow Terps of duty, dedication, and discipline. You bring important experiences and perspectives to the entire university community. To those veterans who have served in the past and are now University of Maryland students, staff, faculty, or alumni, 
We are grateful for the veterans experience you share with us. Now, as you can see, members of the mighty sound of the Maryland will play an armed services medley. I ask all veterans to stand and be recognized when their branch theme is played. Family and friends are encouraged to honor the veterans in their lives by standing during the appropriate song. Thank you to the mighty sound of the Maryland Marching Band. Can we have another round of applause for all of our veterans? Now we have the pleasure of hearing from an alumni veteran, the Maryland alumnus Mike Nally. Mike served seven years in the Army and Army National Guard. As a Ranger, he was a squad leader and chief sniper instructor in the 3rd Ranger Battalion. 
He earned his undergraduate degree in history from the University of Maryland while serving as a scout team leader in the Maryland National Guard and a detachment sergeant in the Pennsylvania National Guard. Mike's primary career has been in real estate development, and in 2003, he started his own real estate company. In addition, he is the founder and CEO of Lead Your Way Solutions. As a part of his full career, Mike found the time to complete a master's degree in organizational leadership from Gonzaga University. Mike, we're pleased you're here. Thank you, Dr. Clement, President Lowe. It's a great honor for me to stand before you and speak on behalf of the alumni veterans. Um, my wife and I, in 1988, when I was the president of the Vets Club, had a very similar ceremony, only where you were in the little chapel, there was about six people there. Different times, different times. I'd also like to thank the alumni, veterans, the band, the Honor Guard, because everybody who's been a veteran here knows how much it stinks being in the Honor Guard. So we appreciate everybody's uh, support today. So I'm a Maryland kid. I went to Gaithersburg High School. I was a solid C minus student. I joined the military because that was a great opportunity for me to learn something about myself and serve my country. Um, I was in a Ranger community from 82 to 86. I came to Maryland in 1986. I served in the Guard for my entire time at Maryland, and I graduated in 1989 with a BA in history. Um, during that time, I did serve as the Vice President and the President of the Vets Club, and my predecessor, Dave King, while on duty as Major Dave King, was severely burned on 9-11 when the Pentagon was struck by the terrorist attacks. So for me, being here is a great honor and a very humbling experience. But I am old enough for people to start asking me about life lessons, which should be a warning to everyone. I am in one of these pictures 29 years ago and 29 pounds um, at some point, and all you young guys look out and say, geez, I'm gonna look like that someday. Yes, yes, you will. <laughs> so the lessons that I like to talk about from uh, my military experience are simple, and every veteran here knows them by heart. They could all stand up here and talk to the same principles, but I'm gonna speak for the crowd today. So my lessons that I've learned in the military are personal accountability for yourself so you can take care of your buddy, understanding how to fail and drive on, what it means to serve, and what it means to lead. So life lessons number one, sua sponte, of your own accord, the Ranger Regiment's motto, Sua sponte means it's up to you. It's up to you to make something happen. It's up to you to take care of yourself. It's up to you to take care of your buddy. My little story on taking care of each other was when I was in sniper instructor school and we had a slight training mishap. One of the instructors tried to unnerve us with some flashbang, started a giant fire near us all. One of my buddies jumped up to put the fire out with that good old leg shovel and immediately caught on fire. His burlap suit, his sniper suit, lit him up like a Roman candle, and he ran right towards me. I'm thinking, stop, drop, and roll, stop, drop, and roll, stop, drop, and roll, everybody knows that. <laughs> of course he didn't, and as he was looking behind him, there was a tail of flames, he ran right into my arms. I grabbed him, we rolled around on the ground for a little bit, I tried to put him out with my body, with my hands, a bunch of my buddies came over and tried to help us out. They all jumped on top of me. And a buddy of mine in this picture, Tom Gallagher, also a University of Maryland grad, if you see the, uh, the slides come up again, uh, he came and looked right at me and said, Mike, you're on fire. <laughs> so I did what everybody's trained to do. I ran. I ran. I was going to scream, but I didn't quite get there yet. So as soon as my feet hit some sand, I realized, stop, drop, and roll, stop, drop, and roll. And I rolled around on the ground, I saw the flames come up over my chest, and I was about ready to yell in pain. And four or five of my buddies jumped on me with wet BDU jackets and smoke came off my chest from the flames. The important part of that story is one of those guys was the guy who was the first one on fire. He was still smoking and had second degree burns on his legs, but he had found a way to get up and come help me. And that's what it means to be a vet. 
That means everybody here knows that. Take care of yourself, not for you, but to take care of your buddy, take care of somebody else. So life lesson number two, don't be afraid to fail. Adversity is part of life. You're going to have to try things, fail, pick yourself up, and drive on. Has anyone ever failed at anything? Has anyone ever failed at anything important to them? Absolutely. It's part of life. I failed patrols in ranger school. I failed my first jump master exam. I failed my first shooting exam in sniper school. And every time the instructors ask me the same thing, do you want to quit? No. I didn't want to quit. And that's part of the lessons. There's no reason to quit. Stay in the fight. Drive on. Don't be afraid to fail. If you're afraid to fail, you're afraid to try. You're going to create a very small bubble. I learned in the military to try to learn. The process of learning requires failure. Creativity, innovation, all require failure. Invention, all require failure. So the military taught me it's OK to fail. It's OK to deal with adversity, and you're going to have to learn to drive on. Life lesson three, service is important, and all service matters. Mark Twain said there's two important days in your life, the day you're born and the day you find your purpose. Most of us will find our purpose when we find what we love to serve. I, at this point, love to serve the veteran community, kids, and Habitat for Humanity. So my experience in the military allowed me the opportunity to bring all three together last year. There's an appalling number of homeless vets on our street right now. I called Habitat for Humanity and said, do you guys have a vets program? They said, no, but we're looking for someone to start one in Delaware. I said, I am your man. Let's do something. So we put together the program. We decided to raise the money. The hardest thing to do was find a vet to qualify for the program because Habitat is a hand up. It is not a hand out. So we searched for about three or four months, put ads in the paper, and our vet is a classic veteran story. Marianne was a service disabled vet, mother of two. She'd fallen on hard times. She had moved from hotel to hotel for about three years. She was a victim of domestic violence. She was a person in need. And during these times, while she was living in a hotel room with her two teenage sons, she figured she was going to help somebody else. Let me say that again. She was going to help somebody else. So when she called about our veterans ad, she was going to volunteer so that some other veteran could have a better life. So our volunteer coordinator said, ma'am, I think you could, should apply for this program. We're, you're, you're the person we're looking for. She said, no, 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 I want to help somebody first. I want to help somebody first. She was living out of her suitcase with her two sons in a hotel room. At that point, we convinced her to come in and be, apply for the program. She went back to her kids that night and said, boys, we're going to move into a house next year. We moved her in with her two sons on 9-11. And that was one of the proudest moments of my life watching that family walk into that house. So service matters. Every veteran here knows it. Every family member of a veteran knows it. Make sure you keep going out there and find the thing that truly moves you to continue to serve. Fourth, it takes commitment to be a good leader. I was in a Ranger Battalion when there was three future legendary generals as junior officers. Stanley McChrystal was a captain who on the marathon team with me. Uh, Major John Vines then became General Vines and ran Afghanistan for two years. Uh, David Rodriguez was my executive officer, then company commander. Again, ran Afghanistan. Now he's in charge of the African Command. Sergeant Major, of, next Sergeant Major of the Army, Archrell Cobb, was our Sergeant Major. We had legendary leaders walking around the streets of the 3rd Ranger Battalion. So here's what I learned. Good leaders require a lot of commitment. Good leaders are accountable for everything that happens and doesn't happen. Good leaders go first when it's hard and last in the chow line. Good leaders serve. They can figure out the great and. 
They can get the mission done and take care of the troops. Good leaders understand that they have to take the blame and give the credit. They understand that they have to lead the way, they have to lead by example. Good leaders are made, and good leaders make a difference. My experience gave me this foundation to succeed in life and lead well. Are we perfect as leaders? Absolutely not. Should we be afraid to lead? Absolutely not. So understanding how to be a person who's willing to step up and take a chance, be a leader, I credit all to the Range Battalion. And for me, I've been lucky enough to be able to put that into play and, and to help create the next generation of leaders in the work I do. So I had a cool story to finish this, but I heard a better one on the way here. So I was listening to NPR. Did anybody hear the story of the NPR this morning about the mother and the father who, about the learning their son's death? So I just talked about accountability, learning to deal with adversity, service, and leadership. And on this day, I think this is a great story to bring those all together. So the setup was NPR announcer is interviewing um, husband and wife, and they're talking about the moment they found out their son had been killed in Afghanistan. And they looked down, and they could see through the door the two Marines standing there in the middle of the night. And the father did not want to go down and open the door. And they sat, and he didn't know what to do because he knew the news couldn't be good. And he paused, and he couldn't finish the story on the radio. He kept going off. He kept talking about his son, how he was a runner, how he was always making things great at home, how he's the middle child, how he was the mediator in the family, how there was so much promise, how they weren't even in combat anymore. He was coming back to Hawaii in two months. It was a mechanical failure. It was a freak accident. All six members of the, his helicopter crew were killed. And the, and the announcer or the interviewer said, well, what was it like? And they said, it was horrible. He said, how are you doing? He said, we're doing okay. We're doing it as well as could be expected. And she said, we're not special. People lose their children every day. There's 2,200 families that had to get the same message we got in the same way we got it from people just killed in Afghanistan. And, the, and her husband said, it's like losing a lung or losing a leg and then figuring out how to live again. And she said, no, it's worse, but we're still going to make it. I thought it was a great story to end this experience for me. But before I do, I'd like to do one thing that I always want to do. So all the veterans on Veterans Day, family members of veterans, would you please stand up? For all the vets who couldn't be here, thank you. Mike, thank you for those very moving remarks, and what a fitting transition to the next part of our program, but I have a challenge point for you. We are moving into the remembrance portion of our veteran program. I ask Chaplain Raymond Ranker of the University of Maryland Lutheran Campus Ministry to come forward and lead us into our tribute to veterans who have died. Chaplain Ranker. With the lighting of the candle, we pause to remember all those who have given their lives for our common good. As this flame tells of sacrifice and hope, let us observe a moment of silence to honor those men and women whose lives were given to defend our country and the values of freedom and justice which we as a nation. Thank you. 
Later in this program, Stone is remembered to be placed in this bowl. During that time, you will be invited to call to mind those in which you would like to honor this day. In sincere gratitude, we remember those who have laid down in their lives that we might give people living in freedom. In our remembrance of them and their stories, may we never forget the brutalities and suffering. Thank you, Chaplain Ranker. As part of our veteran remembrance today, we will now call to mind University of Maryland veterans lost in service long ago. To share this history, I call upon Henry Cabajalas of the Veteran Student Life Unit of the Stamp Student Union. Henry. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, to begin, the University of Maryland fallen veterans of World War I, World War II, and the Korean War were remembered by the families and friends. Over 200 names were submitted by loved ones for inclusion in the Roll of Honor, a book dedicated at the Memorial Chapel in November 1961. The Roll of Honor is now a prized holding at the university archives. In recent years, UMD undergraduate interns have been researching the short but memorable lives of these early heroes. As we remember all university veterans today, let us hold up one biography to represent all of those recordings in the role of honor. Thornton Richard Gillett was born in Southwick, Massachusetts in May 21st, 1920. The youngest of three sons, he attended Wood Woodrow Wilson High School in Washington, DC. The high school yearbook described Thornton as a tall, red-headed boy who possessed quite a bit of what it takes and noted his personality and stylish clothing. After high school, Thorne entered the University of Maryland to pursue engineering in September 1938. During his time at Maryland, he was a fraternity brother in Phi Sigma Kappa. He never finished a degree at Maryland, but he enlisted in the United States Air Force in August 29, 1942 as a private. During World War II, Thorne served as a pilot in a B-24 and ran missions out of London. In July 11, 1944, Thorne was killed in a bomb raid over Munich, Germany. He was only 22 years old. Thorne Richard Gillett is buried in Arlington National Cemetery. Thorne's biography was researched and written by Lauren Mistrip, UMD class of 2004, 2014. We offer tribute to Thorne Richard Gillett and all the role of honor university veterans today. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. It's time to remember all University of Maryland veterans who have died in the recent past. In a moment, representatives from the Terp Vet Student Organization will be placing memory stone in the bowl on stage that Reverend Ranker identified. These 64 memory stones stand for University of Maryland veterans who have lost, we have lost, some while serving in the military and others later after their service was complete. On the screen, you will see the names of 64 University of Maryland veteran alumni who have passed away since October of 2013. Their service to the nation spans decades and covers periods of both war and peace. I invite you to reflect on all of the University of Maryland veterans we have lost as Manor Music sings Eternal Father, Strong We Save, known as the Navy Hymn.
Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much, Manor Music and Terp Vets. Thank you. Today we've come together to honor the contributions and sacrifices of our University of Maryland veterans. On behalf of the entire campus community, please know that we value your service and your sacrifice. In addition, we honor family members and friends who support veterans in this journey. Let us give a round of applause for all of our veterans and for everyone who is part of their lives. The formal part of our program will conclude with a benediction by Muslim Chaplain Tarif Shrem and playing of Amazing Grace by bagpiper Stephen Sharp. Will the audience please rise? I ask you to remain in place until the honor guard retrieves the colors and Chaplain Shrem begins his procession outside. We hope you'll be able to join us for lunch on the chapel, garden chapel patio. Almighty and everlasting God, we have heard the stories of those who undertake the protection of our nation. We have remembered those who have given their lives that peace might be a reality and life may flourish. Later today, some of us will walk the garden labyrinth to recall the valiant contributions of veterans on this campus and beyond. As we leave this building, we witness the cadets as they hold a solemn vigil for fallen veterans over time. Through the service of reflection and remembrance, we would ask that we never take for granted the blessings that all our veterans have secured for us. When we go from here, may the example of their service and commitment to duty call us to follow as a people just in purpose, wise in counsel, living with honor, and pursuing a new day of peace and concord for all. Amen.